Welcome to Beyond Fringe, an organic podcast discussing the topics beyond the fringe of this or any other reality. On this podcast, we explore cryptids, paranormal activity, lost legends, aliens, government conspiracies, historic mysteries, lost treasures, forbidden archaeology, and the edge of reality. I'm the Cryptid Guy, and with me as always is my co-host, Daniel Tiny Hurst. Together, we explore the world beyond fringe. How are we doing tonight, Tiny? Man, I'm doing real good, actually. Real good. I feel accomplished today. I've been up under the Subaru working on it. Made some good progress. I'm pretty pleased. What did you get done on that? Well, I got most of the uh, the hub pulled off. Good. Next part's ball joint and uh, tie rod. So That's not easy, man, especially on a Subi. It's actually not that bad. Um, everything's really accessible, which I was very pleased with. But, you know, them, them bolts rust together real good, so I'm having to let them do a lot of soaking. That's, I understand that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Daniel, but that's going to be the new cryptid mobile, right, for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have uh, big plans for it. I thought you might. You uh, you like driving that better or you miss your old truck? Oh, man. I miss my old truck. I, I love my old four-wheel drive. You, you know, know hippo, you can't go the red wrong hippo. With everybody. Hurts too much to talk about? Yeah. I understand. It, it, it hurt my soul to have to sell it, but, you know, you do what you got to do. You know what, Tiny? Everything happens for a reason, brother. Everything yep. happens for a reason. You know that. Yep. Tonight, uh, we're going to discuss part two of our Giants uh, podcast from uh, chapter seven. So it's going to be chapter eight. We're in chapter eight, right, Tiny? Uh, yes. I think this might be actually nine. Is it eight or not? Wow, it goes fast, doesn't it? It does. Well, it might be chapter eight or chapter nine. We'll figure out when we're in post, putting it all together. Um, and what I what I thought we would do tonight a little bit is, is talk about how uh, the legends of the giants and the Nephilim kind of uh, transmutated into what we call cryptids today, uh, because I'm a firm believer that Bigfoot is the uh, remnants of the Nephilim. Now, Tiny, I, am, I can't remember if, if you're 100% on board with that or not, so why don't you give me your thoughts on that? I think it is is very much possible. Um, it, it's it would explain a lot. I know you kind of don't go that way, but it, it would actually explain a lot for me. Um, you know, like the if they actually do mind speak, or you know, if they if they still have any of that that holy power, mm -hmm. you know, it could explain a few things, but. Honestly, it really makes sense because we know giants are real. We know they existed. We have the bones. We have the evidence. So why wouldn't it, it be something that just kind of evolved? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Tiny, because even, you know, we went through that big list on our last podcast about all the places giants have been found. Did you know that they even found a ton of them in Upper Maine, Middle Maine, yeah. New England? Vermont. I mean, they're, they've been found everywhere. So there has to be something to that. Has to be. Yeah. Um, one, one, uh, one mound they found with a, a nine to 10 foot giant skeleton was yeah. 9,000 years old. Wow. So what does that tell you? Because you know what? A lot of people seem to forget that there was probably many, many civilizations prior to ours and the Native Americans being uh, on this continent. And I think that that might have something to do with it. See, I still, I still think there's a big missing piece of time, you know, between what happened, say, like the, the antediluvian and the pre-diluvian flood periods. Where did these giants go? Because even the Bible says even after the flood, they were still here. So, yeah. you know, did, did they escape here? Were they taking up shop in North America, South America, and, and Canada? I mean, I, I don't know. But all these artifacts that have been found are just insane. And they all... Go where, Tiny? They disappear, and who takes them? That dang old Smithsonian, man. The Smithsonian. Always now, got their hands where they shouldn't be. I will say this. If the Smithsonian is listening, and they want us to come work for them to hush us, that's fine with us. We'll be more than happy to work something out. Absolutely. Definitely. Just so, as long as we get the answers. That's all that matters. Um, but there has to be something to that, because every time something disappears, they always say it's a Smithsonian. Now here's my question. Why? Where did the Smithsonian get the juice to pull something like this off, Tiny? That's what I don't understand. 
Well, you know, the Illuminati. <laughs> also, if the Illuminati. You know, we're sponsored really by the Illuminati. I don't know why you're making fun of them. I don't want to lose our funding. I'm not making fun. I'm saying they're a force and a power that I will be happy to join, along with the MIBs if you're out there. I'm cool. We have we have often stated that we are <laughs> ready, able, willing, and, and anxious to come to work for the MIBs. Uh, so that's why, again, we, we might say some stuff about the Smithsonian, but we never really smack talk any other government, government agencies, do we? No, and there's honestly, there's no real reason to. And no. I'll tell you why. It's because, you know, people, people talk about, well, we'll say the, uh, the secret experiments, okay? You know, when you talk about <clears throat> ufology specifically, you know, they talk about these UFOs and then, oh, well, it's probably, it could be a government craft, whatever. Okay, well, everybody's like, well, why would they keep it secret? Why would they have all these secret weapons? Well, because if they tell us, we're going to tell our enemies. Why would we want to tell our enemies what we have? Well, and, you know, I'm, I'm a fond believer in thinking that if you gave up the ghost and told everyone everything, then, you know, let's just say, again, I know we've said this before, but what happens to religion if you tell everyone that there's aliens out there and Bigfoot's real, it's part human, you know, again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. What, what if Bigfoot has a soul? Then what? Do we, do we turn it in? Do we change them to human beings or, or subhuman beings? Well, what do we do with them? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what about the other cryptids? You know, I, I, you and I both know Dogman's real. Yeah. So where'd he come from? Where'd the Cenocephali come from? Is the Cenocephali part human? You know, I'm really enjoying the theory about, about Dogman being an alien, a predator type alien that comes here to hunt. You, you know, the more I think about it, Tiny, the more I hate saying this because, you know, being the cryptid guy, you know, it's, it's a cryptid. But again, aliens are cryptids. There's more and more starting, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think more and more that that is a possibility. I used to just think it was ridiculous, but now I'm thinking more and more it's a possibility. And the other thing I think is also a possibility is, you know, the arrogance for us to assume that we're the only living uh, beings in the universe is just, we've talked about that, it's ridiculous. Absolutely. But who's to say, uh, you know, giants weren't a, a scientific experience from the Sumerians or the Toltecs or the Mayans or, or some super advanced civilization that came here hundreds of thousands of years ago? And just decided to start tampering with DNA. I mean, look exactly. at you. You're pushing seven foot. You're a big guy. I mean, and, you know, they, they don't come a whole lot bigger than you, Tiny. But, well, you, know, you know, what made the, what what branched off and made your, you know, DNA uh, react like that? You know what I'm saying? So is it just a fluke or is it just well, something that happened? You've got to think, though, you know, and, and I'm small compared to some guys out there. You know, Yao Ming, Shaq. You know, the yeah, I can't yeah. remember the guy that's in the Guinness book, I can't remember his name, but he was enormous. So, you know, and and we actually have just like you know, there's dwarfism, there, there's giantism, so we know that that's in our DNA. So, it's not you know, even without proof, it's not far fetched to believe the giants are real or were real. No, and I'm a firm believer that they were real. I, I, there's, there's one theory that the you know, the true giants, the true Nephilim, which were basically immortal are hiding in some cave in, in some hyperbaric chamber, you know, uh, just waiting to be woken up to take over. You know, I, I know we were talking about that book uh, by Gary Wayne earlier uh, or the last podcast. And like I said, huge fan. Love to have him on the show. Think he's awesome. But his whole thing is how the Giants plan to use secret societies to come back, infiltrate this world, and rule it. And that they're not gone, they're not dead. They're basically in, in suspended animation, way, well, waiting to be, you know, woken back up to rule. If they're Nephilim, and they have that, um, uh, oh my God, what's the word I'm looking for, Christian? Divinity? That, yeah, divinity, thank you. If they have that divinity, then there's a good chance they're immortal. Well, that's kind of what Gary Wayne's going, you know, I think, I, I can't remember, and it's been a while since I read that part. Again, that book is massive, and, and you know it's just it's a heck of a read, and you don't have to take a couple of weeks off just to absorb it, then you probably have to read it again because it covers so much information. But if memory serves, and I'm just prefacing this because I could be wrong, if memory serves, that's where he was going with this, is that they're, they're pretty much immortal. Um, they've got some of them, like that first generation of Nephilim, that's what he's talking about. You know, they, they were compared to almost like serpents. They had slanted eyes. They had like glowing goldish skin. You know, they, they had a certain 
I guess, air about them. They, they had a certain smell about them. So, I mean, who's to say, you know, that's not the original, like that first generation isn't hanging around. And if you look at all the stuff, like Gary Wayne talks about, you know, all the epic wars the Israelites had to fight against these giants. Tiny, I was just cruising through this thing. I mean, he listed like 31 giants that the Israelites killed that were trying to take over. I mean, we're talking just they always want to take over the world. Now, isn't that funny? Every, like, if you look at every, like, Bond villain, all these megalomaniacs, they all want to do the same thing. They all want to take over the world. Where did that original impulse come from, I wonder? Well, I think control is, is a basic human nature. I think we just, it's, it's in our DNA. It was bred into our DNA along with a few other things. But I think that's just a human trait, to be honest. Well, I don't know. Controlling the world? I, I, you know, I'm happy if my dog goes to the bathroom outside. That's enough control for me. Right. You know, I don't need to control the world. If but I can I, control you know, my bank account properly, I'm happy. But right. I just don't understand where this megalomania comes in because that's what happens. All these giants, they've always tried to take over the world. They want to rule the world. Yeah, but if you're, if you're a divine being, you know, there, there's going to be some arrogance and there's going to be some ego there. Well, yeah, they hate us. They hate humans because God chose us. Exactly. So but here's my thing, and this is where I'm having the problem making my cryptid connection, Tiny. If Bigfoot's a Nephilim, is that desire to take over the world and control everything, is it gone? Is it like dormant? Have they just overcome it? Was it bred out of them? Or are they so far, so many generations past where they started that that instinct is gone? What's your thoughts on that? Well, you got to think... You, you, you talk about the, the first generation Nephilim, and if it's been evolved or, or devolved in this case down to, you know, Sasquatch, who is intelligent, but still more animalistic, then you're looking at something there that just probably runs on basic instincts, you know, food, survival, breeding, things like that. Um, you know, even with the more intelligence, you know, to have in, in the patty tops, to have the family units, things like that, they're still more on that, that base instinct. So I would, I would guess, I would venture to think that that desire to take over the world probably doesn't apply to them because it doesn't matter. It, you know, they don't need to take over the world to survive. So you just think, you just think that desire has just been bred out of them? It's been so yeah. many millennia that it's just gone? Yeah. Well, and you know, you have to be, you have to, to have that, that ego and that desire. And to have that, you also have to have a, a certain level of intelligence. You know, dolphins yeah. are incredibly smart, but I doubt they would care to take over the world, you know? Well, if they could. Oh, yeah. A dolphin yeah, ran the world, that would be interesting. I mean, I, I'm sure my Boston would take over the world if she could. Right. You know, I think the two bones would be everywhere. It's a really good thing dogs don't have telekinesis. We would never eat again. Oh, God. You know, it's funny, uh, and, and you know what a – Tiny and I both have Boston Terriers, and uh, and uh, my wife and I, we got we got Blanche, the cryptid wonder dog, cryptid paranormal, paranormal wonder dog. I'm just giving her that moniker because I'm hoping she'll be helpful in the field. But – it's amazing how fast they can take over your life. And I know people say, oh, you're just blah, blah, blah. But it's true. I mean, think about that. Think about how simple it would be just to have a dog's life tiny. What, you, you got very few motivations. What are that Food <laughs> and, and going outside. Well, the basics. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, they also, they get bored. And, you know, oh, yeah. the time, is, it works different for them, I believe, with the shorter right. lifespan. Yeah, I mean, my, you know, Blanche likes to chew on the couch. I mean, you know, so she's got that going for her. Yeah. I mean, they definitely, they definitely don't live a bad life. Well, depend on, depending on who owns them, they don't live a bad life. No, let me tell you something. If I was to die and come back, I'd want to come back as my wife's dog. I'll tell you that right now. You know, that seven pounds, that dog's seven pounds now, Tiny. You know how much, how much of the bed she takes up? How much? All like three quarters. Like, I, I'm, I'm literally sleeping on nothing. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. And that's my fault. That's, that's just me being pathetic because I love my dog. But you know how that is. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Tiny. The other thing I want to cover here is, is we are both David Pleides fans, right? Yes, sir. 
So as you know, my brain works in a very strange way. I'm a verbal thinker. In other words, I got to speak out loud to make sure my thought process is right. I was thinking when we got off our podcast the other night after we got done recording, you know, that correlation, I always, always go back to all those people disappearing uh, in national parks and, you know, the, the David Flight's books. And I've got two, of, I've got three of them in front of me right now. I'm looking. There's Missing 411, Missing 411, Eastern United States. And Tiny, I'm embarrassed to say that, but I've got Bigfoot, Wild Men and Giants, uh, articles from 18... I'm um, probably 1680, 1922. It's still wrapped in the plastic. I have not had time to read it. But here's where I'm going with this. How many people do you think disappear in the continental United States every year, Tiny? You know, I'd guess probably a couple hundred. Tiny, I'm going to tell you a number, and this blew me away. You ready for this? Yes. And this is a lowball estimate from what I read. 600,000 people disappear in this country every year. And this is just disappearances without, you know, without being found, remains. Uh, some of them no. are found, you know, and that was difficult to find because some of them are found, some of them are not. But the statistics, regardless uh, of, of they're found or not, still, that many people disappear a year. Now, I'm not sure how many are found. Because, again, that was kind of hard to find. Some people say that they find 90%. Some people say that it was 70%. But the fact is, can you imagine that many people disappearing a year? That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's insane. And another fact, that, well, another factoid. I'm calling this one a factoid because this was actually real hard to look for. And I'm going to preface before I say anything, I'm not 100% sure this is accurate. So I want the listeners to know that I'm saying this from the get-go. But allegedly, and I'm using the word allegedly here, Tiny. 1,200 people disappear a year from national parks. Wow. National parks, Tiny. I thought, now, you that's you know what I think is national see, parks. You know, I can see people getting lost and disappearing, things like that, but that's a large number. That's an incredibly large number. And again, I'm just, this is not, this has not been correlated. It's not corroborated. This is just something I read in, in a, an article. Uh, it was from a reputable source. So I'm, I'm, that's the only reason why I'm saying it, but it's alleged. I am not saying that's how many people, that's allegedly 1,200 people a year. Even if it's not, even if it's half that, that's still an incredible amount of people disappearing. Yeah. And, they're ne and, and, and many of them are never found. I think they said it was 75% or never found. And again, that's alleged. This is an alleged, I, you know, I don't know how much I trust this. This wasn't done by like National Geographic or anything like that. It was just an article I was browsing. And then I started thinking to myself, I wonder how that breaks down in the states. Tiny, what state do you think has the most people disappear? Uh, Wyoming. Uh, only 45 people disappeared from Wyoming last year, Tiny. Really? Yep. Hmm. Which one has the most? California had 2,100 people disappear last year. Wow. Texas had 1,246. Now, and then we get to here, where is it? Where is, where's our one? Uh, there it is. Florida has 1,252 disappear. Now, Tennessee, your home stopping ground, 361 people disappeared last year out of there. That's that's because they stumbled up on steel. Probably. Now, here we go. This one was a little surprising for me. North Carolina, guess how many people we had disappear last year? How many? 327. Now, these are all in national parks, right? No, these are all in statewide. Oh, statewide, okay. Statewide. And this is 19, this is 2019. This is last year's stats I'm looking at. That's a large amount of people. Right, and this, this is from an article from WALB News 10. And, uh, you know, it's, it has to be, it, it's got to be replicable because it's, it's, an, it's a news outlet. You know, it's actually a TV station. And, you know, Arizona has a missing in Arizona day each year. Really? Alaska only, now dig this. Alaska only has 309 people disappear, but that's... That's uh, the, the, these people. This is missing 
you know, per 100,000, that's 41.8% missing out of 100, you know, out of their, out of who, at that certain region. So is there, is there a correlated study of how many cryptid sightings in those same states? No, um, that's something we'd have to work on our own because, you know, a lot of people don't even want to talk about cryptids. But what surprised me, Tanya, is South Carolina's only got 184. So we're almost double South Carolina. Nebraska only has 61. Well, and you know, here in North Carolina, and well, honestly, probably California too. You think about those. There's a lot of a lot of the nature community here. Exactly. People that, that want to be outside and doing stuff. It's part of the draw for this area. And it is. Of, I've heard of the same about California. You know, with their weather and all, but uh, there, there's a lot of factors that could go into a lot of different things there. Oh, yeah, and we don't know how many people, like, they didn't give the statistics of how many people showed back up. This is just how many people have been reported missing. Right. So there could be a horrible correlation. There could be a whole lot more. I just think it's amazing that many people actually disappear. That's what, that, that's my point. It's like, how is that possible? I mean, if you think about that, that's an incredible amount of people. Yes, it is. That's just, just insane. So that's, that's where I was going with that. Um, but my other, my other thought process went to, how many of those people disappear in national parks, you know, uh, ran into the offshoot of a Nephilim? Uh, never to be seen again. And I often wonder if, if, if David Pilates would ever, ever admit that that's what he's really going, what, that's what he's really trying to talk about. Probably not. Because that's a, it's a subject that, uh, well, we'll just say that's touchy. Now, for people who don't understand why this is such a touchy subject is, imagine you're the U.S. government and you've been aware of these creatures for the last 200 and something years. And you've never said anything because you don't want to scare people. And you don't want to freak people out. And let's just say Lewis and Clark, let, let's just say hypothetically, they, they ran into the hairy man or the big man or the big man of the woods or the boss of the woods. And that was actually, you know, known information. And uh, it was just kind of glossed over. I can understand why they didn't say anything back then, because that would stop westward expansion. Does that make sense, Tiny? Yeah. But today, why would they not say anything today? Well, because they don't want Bigfoot to become a protected species and stop exactly. wilding, stop backdoor activities, things like that. Exactly. So the second that happens, what happens to the, the recreational dollars? It's gone. And the, and the forestry dollars. Yeah, it's gone. And you can kiss the economy goodbye. So, and let's not forget, let's just say you had some people disappear. They probably have some relatives that are still around, wondering what the chances are that their uh, loved one was lunch for one of these things. And how come no one said or did anything? I think it would probably make, uh, I, I guess we could call that an actionable situation, couldn't you? Yeah. So I'm sure that's a big part of it, too. And again, this is all hypothetic. We don't know. We're not, you know, we don't work for anyone that can tell you yay or nay. We just don't know. This is just our own conjecture. And this is all hypothetic. You know, we don't know. And, you know, our topic, what we're talking about is, you know, we're, we're talking about giants and, and the, the Nephilim part two, pretty much on this podcast. And everything we are discussing, we've, we've either uh, read or looked at or heard or seen. So we're, we're talking about things that, you know, are easily... Um, researchable so uh oh, wow. again one of the one of the books we've been looking at is something called the genesis 6 conspiracy uh by gary wayne and that's where i'm getting a lot of this and it, again tiny i know i keep saying that this book is just incredible you know he ties in the holy grail to all this too and camelot and then there it is inside freemasonry there it is dun 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 it all comes <laughs> down you said it, man. It all comes down to Illuminati. So, what if, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go just a little bit off track here. Because, you know, like you said, there's people probably wondering if, you know, these, these people that are gone missing are, are lunch. Or, you know, dinner in my case. I would be a dinner, I think. And uh, I'm at least a two-course meal. However. A afternoon snack. Okay. All right. So, 
what if they're snatching people for for breeding stock well see that's a good point too because we know we have the focus uh the mihos and folklore from the native americans on how they would grab women and some sometimes you know they come back a year later pregnant uh, you know that's where the term force bride came from so you know it's is it very it's very possible it's very possible you know there's there's that theory too you know i don't want to go too far into this one but you know there's there's that place in uh what is it utah or california it's not skinwalker ranch but it's uh, it's a place where allegedly there's there's all these aliens underground and they're doing experiments on people mm. Oh, you know, and God. part of me wonders. I can't. I can't think of what that's called right now. It's not Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, I can't think of what it's called either. Uh, it'll come to me. But you know, what's to say that maybe people aren't getting grabbed from subterranean caverns and taken down to be experimented on? Yeah. I mean, we just don't know. It could be anything. And well, I'm not arrogant enough to say that's a stupid thing to say. Right. Because you know. He, there's so much stuff going on in this world today that we don't even know about. What about the stuff that's really scary we don't know about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now, you know, they they admitted that UFOs and aliens are real. Or, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. They, they finally come out and admitted it. And it all got shuffled around and, and never talked about. But now we've had the increase in, like, USO yep. sightings. So, you think about how much space is unexplored in the ocean, how deep it goes that, that it's going to still want to take us probably years to get there. Uh, well, I say us as the general population. Our government may have already been there. We don't know. But what if, you know, these first, second generation Nephilim are hiding down there? Well, you know, and then that all brings you to again i hate tying all the conspiracies together into a simple knot but it brings in antarctica yeah you know an operation paper or an operation paperclip and you know operation high jump all that for the admiral bird you know and the things he saw you know and then and there's that large conspiracy theory that the nazis built down these massive underground uh, tunnels and they stumbled across basically a lost civilization or still prehistoric yeah you know, so who's to say that they weren't down there? You well, know? I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of people that believe uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth is based on a real event. Yeah, that's true, too. I mean, a lot of people believe that. And again, you know, we're not saying this is true. We're not saying it's false. We're just saying it's possible. We're here so. to talk about the strange and unusual. And that's exactly yeah, that's high strangeness, man. And that definitely falls into high strangeness to, in my category because I got to be honest with you, Tiny. I'm a firm believer that Antarctica is a whole lot more than what it looks like. Well, it would be a perfect place. You know, it, it would. Because, you know, you've got those maps that predate, you know, um, prior to the ice shelf being there. And yeah. after they they scanned it with their satellite, you know, after, the, after, I guess, different governments have scanned it with satellites to see yeah. through the ice, you know, those maps are exact. So, I mean, it's this is where that come from. How, how are you getting that? Where'd that tech come from? That tells me someone actually had to be there. So, I mean, there's, you know, and, and we're going to do a, a, a podcast about ancient maps because we're going to tie that in with uh, our pal Christopher Columbus and uh, the family he married into. But that's a different story. So we'll, we'll get into that, uh, in a, you know, a couple of months or something like that. It's on the list of uh, podcasts you know, to do. All of these inhospitable places on the planet would be a perfect place to if you're a nephilim or if you're you know some secret government organization or alien or anything like that. and it's hard to talk about any of this stuff without getting into conspiracy theory topics which point to a lot of those conspiracy theories that have been around for years have come to fruition uh, you know just saying however those unhospitable places would be a perfect place to hide in plain sight. Especially back then, because no one even knew it existed. And now I saw um, the other day that they found new structures on Mars. Were they the pyramids? 
No, it wasn't the pyramids. This looked like uh, some sort of base. Really? Yeah. Um, I didn't. I saw. I was at work when I saw it, so I didn't get to actually read the article. But um, I saw a couple of the comments, and they're like, "Well, why didn't our, our rovers send pictures of these back?" Well, okay. Real easy explanation there. If they did, they're not telling us about it. Well, that's definitely that's that's like you know all these astronauts from the original Apollo missions talking about, you know, their run-ins with UFOs and alien beings. And that's why we never, the, you know, they, they're saying one of the reasons why we never went back to the moon is because we were told to get the hell out of there. Yeah. In no uncertain terms. This is not yours, it's ours. And, you know, I, I just saw another, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because I saw something where they, they found water is a lot more prevalent on the moon than they thought. Yeah. So, you know. It, I also saw that um, the other day there was some astronomers got pictures of what looked like a small armada of ships pulling energy from the sun and there was two alien or well i can't say alien ships but there was two unknown ships rendezvoused with the space station so i'm sorry say that last part again two ships what rendezvoused with our space station our space station yes the uh, the international space station yes that's and crazy you, you got to think too. Okay, so there's always a, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into a personal conspiracy theory here that, that me and you have talked about, but it will probably turn into a podcast all of its own. But you got to think that I'm a, I'm a firm believer that Hollywood and, and the movies that we watch are made for a reason, and that's to desensitize us. I agree. And we have had. So many alien movies, okay? Now, we as, as human beings are incredibly creative, incredibly imaginative creatures, okay? Yes, hands down, no doubt. But there's a lot of this stuff, this tech that you see on TV that is, is beyond what we should really be imagining, okay? But it's coming to fruition. And then you have all of these other alien movies, you know, uh, District 9, um, Independence Day. All of these, I think they're preppings. And then all of a sudden, they finally come out and they've admitted twice. People don't believe me, but they have admit, admitted twice. The first time, it was the, the, the DOD came out, had a press conference, and it disappeared the next day. They said, yes, aliens exist. And then the most recent admission, and they said, yes, we believe they exist. We've known for years. All right. And now, all of a sudden, astronomers are seeing these ships. They, they saw ships rendezvous with the space station. There's been reports, and, and I really don't get into a whole lot of the ufology, but it's, it, it's a, a track that you follow. And... We've been being prepared for this for years, and now it's starting to come to fruition. I bet within the next 10, 15 years, there will be a first, air quotes, first contact for the general public. Well, let me ask you this, Tiny. How long do you think the federal government's known about aliens, the existence of extraterrestrials, the existence oh, of giants, the existence of Bigfoot, Dogman, the Anunnaki? I would, I would guess that. The government has known about alien life most likely since we were first able to look into space real good. Um, I'm going to give him Eisenhower. I'm going to give him the Eisenhower administration. Well, and, and then, you know, cryptids. Yeah, that's different. Bigfoot specifically. But, I mean, he's been around before we were here. Well, I'm still a firm believer that, you know, like I, I just said it before, but when Jefferson sent Lewis and Clark out, I think one of the reasons why Mary Le Meriwether Lewis was killed uh, is because he wrote blatantly about running into forest giants. He had it in his journals. And then he commits suicide by shooting himself in the head twice. Yeah. That takes skill. That's, t yeah, with, you know, with, a, with an old, you know, what were those 50 caliber bullets back then? Those, those weren't those flintlocks. I mean, yeah, those flintlocks, but wasn't the bullet like a, I mean, that round lead ball? Yeah. Big yeah. 
That thing was massive. So not only did a man shoot himself, and I believe it was in the back of the head twice. Yeah. So uh, there's that conspiracy for me. That makes total sense. Because sure why would you, you know that would have stopped mess that would have stopped westward expansion, it would have delayed manifest destiny, and it possibly could have cost us our country. So that makes sense to me. But you know you can't, and then you you know you talk about Jefferson, you talk about the founding fathers, and you still talk about all the guys from the original, you know, Freemason Masonic cabal that founded this country i'm wondering how much information they knew about that you know i mean how much how far back does this go how deep does the secret get you know because i mean think about it you know you got colonies you know columbus got here in 1492 lee ferrickson was here in 960 and that's the first thing he ran into was a group of sasquatch and he said you know they were large smelly and violent and they were coming after him yeah, and I'd, I'd be violent if I saw some naked, hairless people invading my home, too. Yeah, of course you would. But it just makes me wonder how much of this has just always been kept on the low. And even back then, I wonder why. And it, it makes me wonder, too, especially, you know, since we're, we're making that Nephilim connection. You think about a lot of the a lot of the mythology, even, you know, the, the native mythology or mm -hmm. really any mythology where you hear about gods that, that take the form of, of animals, you know, yeah, snakes, Anubas, things right. like that. Well, if you have a divine power, it would kind of make sense that you could. And it's a good way to disguise yourself also. That's true, but a lot of people, you know, when, when we're talking about Leif Erikson, a lot of people don't know Leif Erikson was trying to, you know, he was trying to, to turn the Vikings Christian. He had seen the light. He, he had seen, you know, he, he believed in Jesus. Uh, he, he became a Christian, and a lot of people think that when he saw the Nephilim, that just reinforced it, or, or I'm sorry, when he saw the Bigfoots, he thought they were kind of Nephilim, and that just kind of reinforced what he'd been thinking, and that's why he wanted to go back to convert the rest of his, you know, people to Christianity. Yeah. So that could have been, you know, that could have been one of the reasons why they did that. But, you know, we don't know. We weren't there. And the truth is, we don't know what they saw. And again, this is all conjecture. We don't know. That, that, that's the other thing is nobody knows. This is the difference between us and other podcasts. We're not claiming to be experts. We're not saying this is the end all be all. This is what happened. There's no other excuse, blah, blah, blah. You and I both know there's a hundred different things that could have happened. We just don't know. We're just kind of trying to put the pieces together. Absolutely. Some sort of puzzle. It's all just, it's fun to talk about. It's fascinating and it makes your mind work. So, exactly. And, you know, the other thing is this there could be a piece of the puzzle where all this just fits and it would make sense. There's just one piece missing. And whoever figures that out, everything's going to be fine. It just makes it all work. You know, and again, I've said this before and other podcasts, and I'll say it again everything is connected. Um, I, I know you believe that too. And we just need to figure out how it all works together. Yeah, and I think, I think a big part of that. I think a lot of this this folklore mythos it all does stem from giants. I think giants are are where it all stems from, because those were the first real legends. Those were the first folklore. Those were the first you know uh, fairy tales. You know, the, if if you weren't good, who was going to come get you? Right. You know the giants. You know, I, I was looking at this. You know, every culture has some kind of you know tales about giants. So there, there has to be something to it. And then we have yeah. all these bones that have been discovered, all these skeletons that have been discovered pretty much everywhere in the continental United States. And they've been discovered, they've been written about, and then boom, they vanish, disappear, and who takes them? I, was, so, uh, I had a thought the other night after we'd done the, the first part of this podcast. And, you know, I don't know if there's any real validity to the thought process or not, but, you know, you, you think about – when you think about giants, one of the first things that come to mind is obviously the dinosaurs, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they were giant. So we know that, that during that time, the planet could support giants. So what if that, that missing link that we have to put everything together, that these, these giants existed alongside dinosaurs? You, you know, know, Tiny, that's a good point. And I, I wouldn't, 
you know, people say, oh, they were, you know, 65 million years apart, 165 million years. They don't know that. You know, they, they don't know what ex went extinct and when it went extinct. I mean, I, I don't, I used to have uh, faith in, in what was written and what was said in the scientific community. I used to. But that's before I started doing this a lot more. So it's, it's easy to say something, but the truth of the matter is we don't know. Well, and, you know, you can still have faith in the scientific community, but the thing that people don't realize or don't want to think about or just simply don't think about whatever the case may be is the scientific community is every day is still learning new things. Think about it like this. This is, this is kind of how I think about it. You know, I was out in the yard the other day working, right? I had to dig a hole and I dug up something that I'd forgotten about from, you know, six or eight years ago that I had left laying and it had been covered by a foot of dirt, right? Now, if a foot of dirt can cover something and cause it to be forgotten in eight years, what could 65 million cover up? And how deep are we gonna to have to go to find it? Well, you know, what most people don't realize, if you wanna, you know, if you wanna start talking like that, cause that's a good point. 99% of all species that have lived on this earth are now extinct. Think about yeah. that, all right? And they discover 15 to 18,000 new species a year. So, you know, and a lot of that has to do with microbes and insects and things like that. Yeah. But, you know, you know, the Billy Ape, what was that? In, in 2004, 2014, something like oh, that? Okay, yeah. All right, that, that's not that long ago on the historic aspect of things. So, you know, you don't know. And that's what kills me about people in science. They don't want to, they're not willing to take that, leap of faith they say yeah. it's possible it's either black and white with a lot of them and that's not the issue there's a lot of shades of gray in there because you don't know and that's what you know when you know you talk about cryptozoology with like a scientist or you talk about giants oh hey let's just say okay you know do you believe in giants and you're talking to a physicist they're gonna laugh at you and think you're silly you know well what's to say it's in the biblical text so yeah, what's to say that's of... why isn't it why can't it be real well, and there's, because, oh, there's no scientific proof. There's no scientific proof. Yeah, yeah, there is. There's lots of it. It's just, it's been taken. I don't know why. That's, that's, that's why I don't understand. Why can't they just admit there was giants? It, because even if you have a bunch of people that are very religious, they're going to say, okay, that's fine, because the Bible says it anyway. So that just reinforces the Bible. And if you have people that aren't religious and you still say, okay, we had giants, People are going to say, okay, that's cool. We probably, you know, there was probably another species of humanity that just, you know, it was their time to be extinct, and that's what happened to them. Again, yeah. but how hard is that to just say it's possible? You know, anything's possible. And I don't know if that's just because we work in the realm of the cryptozoology and the paranormal and in, in times the supernatural, and that's what we're used to because sometimes, you know, logic doesn't dictate the answer. Sometimes you have to go on faith, and sometimes gut feeling. And yeah. I think that's where people like us, you know, other cryptozoologists, other paranormal investigators, other supernatural investigators, we all have that why not, it's possible mentality. And I think that's what makes us a little bit different than regular scientists. Well, and, and we look for the impossible. Exactly. You know, and really, if you think about it, a lot of the impossible is not impossible, it's improbable. And there's a difference. Improbable is not impossible, it's just probably not capable you know but when you talk about cryptids for instance nature finds a way i agree just that I agree. it's like you know when people say something like um you know the, i've had people ask me well do you believe in the lizard man yeah i do why well why wouldn't i because it's you know that's that's impossible but what's that, who says that's impossible what point of the evolutionary scale wouldn't a reptile develop two legs well, you know, you know and, and be bipedal? I How think, come? I think a lot of people where they, they have the issue is, okay, like with lizard man, it's lizard man. So they automatically focus on, well, it's a hybrid between a lizard and a man. That's not, that's yeah, that's, so I, I see what you're saying. And just like you said, well, why couldn't it have evolved and, you know, came up on two legs? Exactly. And see, that's the thing people don't realize, you know, it's like, you know, when we're talking about, 
uh, you take that supernatural approach and you have the were bears, you know, a, a human being that transforms into a cross between a bear and a human being, uh, right. or a were tiger, or a were lion, or, you know, all these lion men. You know, in Africa, they have stories of lion men that are like, they're werewolves, except, you know, they're lion, half lion, you know. So you have all these folklore and mythos. But where did it come from? There had to have been a zero set. There had to have been that starting point. Someone had to light that fire. Yeah. And it's the same thing with giants. Maybe all of this stemmed from giants. You know, maybe all of these cryptids stemmed from giants. If cryptids are Nephilim, and the Bible talks about the, you know, the, the watchers corrupting all flesh and all on, on everything. So who's to say that they didn't create the dog man, the lizard man, all of these different things? We don't know. There is so much. Look at all the Greek mythology. All you, know, you got Gorgons, Medusa, you know, Krakens, things like that. Where did all this folklore mythology come from? Had to have been something. Well, something kickstarted this whole thing. And that's something. That, that's what I was saying is all of those things, maybe those are actually Nephilim. I, that's why I, and I agree with you. I, I personally believe that all of this folklore mythos and the Greek myths and, and the Romans that stole the Greeks and, and, you know, all these, even, even the German myths with the Valkyries and you know, all of this mythos, all of it globally, you know, and, and again, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Look, there is a, explain to me how there is a vampire folklore mythos for every culture on the planet. Right that goes back thousands of years. So there's, we know there was no, no one was visiting anyone in the Samoa Islands from Norway. Right. You know, 3,000 years ago, it wasn't happening. Is it possible? Sure, it's possible. Do I think it happened? No. But all these creatures and all these folklore and all this mythology all coincides globally. They had well, different have names for it. Some of the ways to get rid of them were different, but they basically all did the same thing. Like a vampire sucked your blood, couldn't take the sunlight. Anything divine would drive it insane, but it lived pretty much forever. It had incredible strength and it could do unspeakable things. You know, and then you have throw the werewolf mentality in there or the werewolf folklore. You know, and again, this is that realm's on the supernatural. But the cenocephali, who's to say the werewolf mythology didn't derive from cenocephali? Right. And all of it, again, can be tracked back to the giants because they were that first generation. So if giants are real and we accept and adopt and apply that giants are real, you know, the property transverse reaction says, and this has to be real. So that's just something I agree with. I think that's how the whole ball of wax kind of started. And well, it's just, again, these are just my thoughts. I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, you know, but you at least I'm looking think, for answers. You can also think, too, that, that if – you know, the, the Nephilim were here, they have divinity, and their offspring are going to have divinity. You know, it, it dilutes, of course. But I also believe that, um, and for the listeners, I'm sorry if you heard my dog's bark. It's probably a, a cricket farted outside or something. <laughs> However, if you, I, personally, I believe if you're looking at things from a religious point of view, and, and yeah, I do separate a lot of things. Um, from religion and science and then the other things that I do. Um, I'm complicated in that way. But if you're, if you're talking about from a, a divine aspect, I believe that we were created with a certain amount of divinity in us as well. I believe that we are, are very powerful creatures ourselves. And I think that there's a lot of ability that we've had in the past that we have lost. Now, who's to say that in earlier years before we were trained out of things that, that we didn't have certain abilities that could, you know, we could become aware, whatever. I or, believe, you know, I, you're right. You're 100% right. And, and just to, to just put a little side note on that, you know, keep in mind, the one thing that makes humanity different from all other God's creations, we have a soul. We have an immortal soul. So... Creatures that are divine might be immortal, but they don't have a soul. That's the difference. We have an immortal soul. So that would, if if you have a divine, like a Nephilim, then, and not have a soul, then theoretically that would prevent them from the, uh, the, uh, 
right or wrong aspects of things. It's not well, it right also keeps them out of the kingdom of heaven. Right. Because remember, these things were deemed an abomination. All right. And if you look at the word abomination in the biblical sense, it's an affront to God. That's like the one thing biblically you don't want to be is an abomination. So, you know, there's a whole, again, you know, I don't want to get too biblical because I don't want to turn the viewers off. You know, I want people to think that's what we, you know, we're turning it. No, that's not. That we're just using that because that's where all the history for this pretty much comes from. And we are, you know, talking about a book by a guy named Gary Wayne that, you know, this is where a lot of his resource material comes from. It's all biblical in nature. But historically, you know, what's the best history book there is? You know, it's the Bible. It's all, I mean, there, there's so many, so many possibilities. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's the other part. You know, look at the Sumerians. You know, are, are, are you, you know, do you believe in, you know, the Anunnaki? Nibiru? I mean, Planet X? I mean, well, some of that stuff makes sense, man. It does. Because I've said this before, too. You know, human beings are not slated for this planet. We can't breathe underwater. We can't see at night. We don't have retractable claws. We have to wear artificial layers to protect us from the elements. You know, again, there's no night vision. The only thing that keeps us safe is the fact that we cluster and we have an intelligence that helps us create weapons. But indigenous to this planet i don't think you know there's, there's still a part of me that doesn't think we're indigenous to this planet we might have been brought here you know we might have been manipulated our dna could have been manipulated so there's there's all these different things that are always possible and and that's that's where you know all these questions come into play is because where did these theories come from you know when, when kurt von down again wrote about you know chariots of the god he started correlating all these pieces of the puzzle together and i think that's where a lot of great theories came from and yeah. you know he again he he talks about giants quite a bit and because giants were even back then. So, you know, who's to say the Anunnaki weren't giants or the Toltecs weren't giants? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of these gods that, that have been worshiped over the years very easily could have been alien. And if they're, you know, so far technologically advanced, you would think God. Exactly. You know, a, a good example of that is like, you know, uh, Thor, you know, uh, Thor was, you know, was he 1,200, 1,500 years old in, in the Marvel Universe? And he's been coming to Earth for the last 1,000 years, you know? Yeah, something like that. So something like that. But think about that. Now, if, if 1,000 years ago, you know, Thor was in uh, Norway battling frost giants, okay, and, and using all the tech he had back then, you know, Molnar and, and you know, being the thunder and be able to create lightning bolts and stuff like that, of course he's going to be a demigod. That's where the term comes from. So that would make sense. Any kind of technology, you know, a far advanced technology to us today. I mean, if, if you had, you know, an alien race show up that could control time travel, you know, and take you anywhere in space time, you know, would, they would, in my opinion, they'd pretty much be a demigod themselves. Right. So, I mean, that you know, it all makes sense because water meets its own level. If you're an advanced civilization, it's kind of like the Thucydides trap. You know, any advanced civilization is either going to do one or two things, enslave or destroy, you know. And there's a third break in there where they possibly might help us along. Now, whether or not that would happen, I, I don't know. But who's to say that we are not remnants of like, you know, basically, you know, a, a colony of, of experiments. And look what we've done. So who knows? I mean, is it possible? Of course it's possible. Ants in an ant farm. Exactly. Ants in an ant farm. And, you know, who's to say that the giants weren't, you know, the overlords? They, we know biblically that the Israelites fought and killed many, many giants that were kings of their own nations, quote unquote, that were just hell bound to take over everything, you know, slash and burn everything until it was all theirs. And that's where that, that divine comes in. Because I personally think that hatred for humanity is instilled in them from the Watchers, which were the first, you know, generation from the Daughters of Cain and, and, and the Fallen Angels. I think that's where that divinity, that hatred of divinity comes in. Yeah. I think that's where that whole desire to take everything in. But that also complicates my belief that Bigfoot is also a Nephilim because I don't think that would completely breed out. And I start to wonder if maybe he wasn't, you know, again, bred for a specific purpose 
and then you know over the millennia across the land bridge and came in here and you know then we have the north american woody wow. i just don't know and it's, well, it's and just so many questions i can i could there's ask a lot of alien abductees that claim to see bigfoot when they're abducted well you know there was that one story we heard from that mutual friend of ours where the woman you know i'll just give i'll just paint over this with a, a wide brush but she had been basically living on a farm with a, a family of Bigfoot for what, since the seventies. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she could communicate with them, you know, that they, she knew all of them by their names, you know, she knew how to talk to them. And when the men were, I guess, 18 years of age, they had to disappear for a year to go see the star people. Now, again, this is one of those stories take it or leave it it's one of those things it's just a story it's something we've heard we don't have any proof but that woman was so adamant about that that it makes me think that for some reason i think she honestly believed it and i think the person telling the story to us uh, uh honestly believed it so who knows there's just so many possibilities that's why i would like to get gary wayne here to explain it all to us what are your thoughts yeah. on that well, and you know, you talking about your, your theory getting a little complicated there. You know, I, I said earlier that, that I'm really enjoying the theory that Dogman is alien, you know, kind of predator-like aliens come here to hunt. But, you know, the story that, that we heard about, uh, what was his name, Champ or something? Stripes. Stripes, Stripes. That kind of complicates that thought process. Well, yeah, yeah, because, you know, but then again, Let's just say, you know, they are an alien species that mated with, you know, or genetically did something to like say timber wolves. And they dog had an offshoot and that's what we call, you know, dog man. And maybe they're the alpha type dog man we hear so much about. That would make sense, Tiny. Think about it. That's why we'd have the alpha, the beta and the Charlie type. Maybe they're the alpha, the beta and the Charlies are what they genetically created here. No, that's true. We don't know. And, you know, to have so many, you know, I was listening to uh, an older podcast. And I, again, I don't, we don't, the one thing about us, if we don't have permission to use someone's name, we're not going to use their name. So if, if you want to fill in the blank, feel free. We're not going to sell anyone under the bus or criticize anyone. Because what I'm about to say, I kind of believe, um, and it kind of ticked me off. I heard this interview where this guy was on the radio and he's interviewing someone. He's interviewing someone. And, uh, they uh they're they're talking to him they're agreeing with him blah 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 and all of a sudden you know he mentions the fact that you know it's possible dog man could be an alien and then they start making fun of him right and it kind of ticked me off and be like well who are you guys to make fun of this guy how do you know he's not 100 percent dead on right you know uh, we don't know so for you to actually sit there and you know and 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 make fun of him or or laugh at him or you know mock him it's just it's kind of rude you know because he might be 100 percent right and then who looks like the schmuck so you know and and then there's some other stuff that happened you know it's just it was a good interview but you know he just took it to the level where most people would be like oh god all right here it is you know here comes the lunatic you know what i'm saying right and and i think that happens a lot yeah well, no, yeah absolutely and that's a lot of the reason people don't want to come forward with their experiences yeah, because, you know, and, and that's the problem. Because the mockery, you're getting made fun of, you know, oh, hey, this guy's crazy, blah, blah, blah. That's the worst thing you can do is call someone crazy. Because once that's, once that, you know, stigma steps or sticks in, it's hard to shake it. Yeah. And I know you and I both know what that's like. Yeah. The the difference, I think, with, with you and I both actually is we really don't care. No, I don't give a damn. I care less. I mean, you someone know, calls I, me crazy. I take it as a compliment. Yeah, well, I know I'm a little bit crazy, but I also know what I experienced. Well, that's the other thing, you know, they have no idea what we've gone through. I, you know, I've said this before, and, I, and I'll say it again. There's places that you and I both know of that we could take someone to that would completely change their reality because their technology wouldn't work. They wouldn't have a cell phone. They wouldn't be able to call for help. They would have to experience something they couldn't handle. They'd have to see what is truly out there in the deep, dark, ancient forests of Appalachia. 
and then their whole life would be different. You know, you you, say, that, you know, I think about, you're exactly right for one, but then I'll think about, we can say that we've had some crazy experiences in the woods, but what about the deeper, darker woods that, that people have never been in? You know, people aren't able to get there because they're too inhospitable. You know, the Amazon, I know a lot of that's been explored, but not all of it. And it hadn't been too long ago, but I discovered a brand new tribe of people. Yeah, did you hear about that? Uh, oh, God, what was he? Uh, uh, um, forgive me, but it, Tiny, my, my brain's a wash right now. Um, he was a missionary. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, and he was killed because he went on an island to bring Christianity to a, a tribe that had just been found not too long ago. I wonder if it's the same tribe we're talking about. Probably. And uh, they, they killed him. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and, and this is 2019 that happened. In. So who's to say? You know, you, you never know. There is a big place. You know, it's we've only, what, 65% of the ocean still isn't charted? Yeah. So, you know, who's to say we're not going to find some sea cryptids? I mean, I, heck, we might find Godzilla. You don't know. Now, that's a cryptid. Well, technically, isn't uh, like the giant squid and things like that, wouldn't it? Kind of I think it's a cryptid, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you never know what's out there. And again, we were talking about mythos and folklore for, uh, you know, seafarers. You know, in the old mythology there, the Kraken, that's a big one. You know, the Greeks had, you know, the, they were a seafaring race uh, on the southern part. They had mythos about the Kraken. Where'd that come yeah. from? You know, again, and he was, the Kraken was, you know, brought forth from Neptune, from something or other, you know, so it's, it's, it's all this stuff links in. So it's very possible, you know, if you were to see the gods that, you know, in Greek, they were probably giants. And that's probably where all that came from. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see that. And there's stuff, there's stuff we have no clue about yet. Oh yeah, there's there's and you know the thing is is like I said not not to blame any one agency or something like that, but I don't think the Smithsonian has helped us out a whole lot as far as it comes uh, as far as it comes to with being uh, fruitful with knowledge. I don't yeah. think they're they're telling us a whole lot. Well, it's, uh, it's, I'm really wondering how much is of that conspiracy is actually true. It's just like with you know all of the the others and them and they and everything it's all about control <clears throat> and it is for it not necessarily controlling us as people but controlling how we think and and how things go you know i mean there's and it, it all really boils right back down to money you think it's more than that though with this you, you think you think there's 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 more at stake than just money with this well, if the alien thought processes, well, and really, even with, even if the, the Nephilim thought processes were there, if there's still first generation Nephilim around or aliens, either one, it's interchangeable. If they're here and they are trying to use the secret societies in air quotes to control the world, then oh, definitely so. Well, let me ask you this, Tiny. Do you really think that secret societies are trying to take over the world? I don't know that they're necessarily trying to take over the world, but I do wholeheartedly believe that a lot of them exist. Uh, I think, you know, with uh, just like a lot of a lot of things, there's stories and thought processes about a lot of them that have got blown out of proportion, and then there's always the bad sectors of them that you know people latch on to because it's in our nature to latch on to bad before good um and i think in a lot of those secret societies probably the uh, the elite are definitely part of those societies and uh, you know the elite obviously run things so it kind of fits in, even if the secret society is not the reason for running things, if the elite are part of them, then they're still running things. Well, see, I'm a firm believer that the secret societies we know about, they're not really secret because we know about them. So I think the real secret societies have yet to be found. Well, it's, you know, it's misdirection. 
Exactly. Because, you know, I love the fact – everyone's always trying to blame everything on the Freemasons. Right. Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Bilderberg, everyone knows who they are. So how much power could they really have? Probably none. So it's probably some offshoot group of people we've never heard of. I mean, I can imagine who some of the players are, and I guarantee they'll all be the wealthiest people on the planet. And uh, I, I think that's probably, if there was a secret a cabal, if you will, running the show, it would be them. And I kind of wonder if they have any blood ties to this ancient Nephilim line. You know, it's entirely possible. And, you know, if you think, there again, I go back to the divinity in the bloodline. I mean, how better to establish oneself and, you know, acquire those means that it would take to be the elite than to be able to use some sort of, you know, divine power. You're absolutely right. And I wonder if that would, you know, explain a lot of the, uh, reptile type uh, explanations well you, specific you see people. a lot of you see a lot of footage out there of people going you know this person or that person's an alien and seeing their uh, their face change on camera or their eyes or something like that and you know reptilians are definitely the, the biggest one that people think are in control and so those ones that scare me aren't the reptilians they're they're supposed to be subterranean right they're not actually extraterrestrial they're they're from earth but like the middle of the earth am i am i correct in well you know i've heard different theories about that i've heard that they are alien but they've been here for thousands of years i've heard that they were the original uh, inhabitants of this planet that went underground they went subterranean after the you know cataclysm with the dinosaurs so you know you just don't know it's 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 very possible for either one uh, and again, anything is possible. And that would explain, you know, like I said, we were talking about that one place in California. Maybe it wasn't California. Maybe it's Arizona. I, uh, gosh, I can't believe I can't remember that. It'll come to me. But you know what that ranch I'm talking about with it? Yeah. And, uh, and they've got all these underground alien bases. And that's, that's, uh, that's a topic for another show, underground bases, because I'm a firm believer we have those two. You know, I, I think that's Absolutely. entirely possible. Absolutely. And, you know, I don't, there's just so much. And, you know, the planet's basically hollow anyway. So if you're going to make an underground base, it really wouldn't be that difficult. And, you know, my hometown, Kingsport, everybody in that area, there, there's an armory there. It's Holston Armory. And they believe that the, the mountains, I mean, the, the armory, hold a huge amount of land obviously you know it's, it's military and, and there's so much traffic and i've seen my personally i have seen weird things happen there but they believe that the mountains that you drive over to get into my hometown of kingsport down interstate 26 onto uh i think it's interstate 81 if i remember right it's been a long time you drive over these mountains and they are convinced that those mountains are hollowed out and you know they they keep munitions and weaponry and vehicles and things like that in those mountains and the interesting thing is there are times late at night when it's quiet you can feel vibrations and you can hear things but you cannot figure out where they come from and i saw something crash into those mountains one time me and my entire family, we were coming back from Asheville here visiting family. And something came out of the sky and hit those mountains and killed electricity for miles in every direction. Well, I'm a firm believer that, you know, that the government used to hollow out mountains for nuclear war. Um, for, you know, yeah, for bases. So yeah. if they did all that, why would you abandon them? I mean, exactly. that's prime real estate. And uh, one of those places, you know, one of our hotspots is not too far uh, from an alleged hollowed out mountain that is used for UFOs. So, you know, there uh, now is that what it is? I, you know, I don't know. Well, let me, let me prefer, pref, preface, preface that, excuse me, y'all, for saying this, that 
my opinion, and Christian, I don't know if you agree with me or not. I, I imagine you will. But when you say UFO, it's exactly what it stands for. It's an unidentified flying object. It could be government. It could be extraterrestrial. What makes it extraterrestrial is what's sitting behind the driver's seat, or in the driver's seat, rather. So when you say UFO, it could be a lot of different things. Yeah, UFO doesn't necessarily mean, you know, extraterrestrial. It's an unidentified flying object. That's exactly what it is. And Tony's right. It's unidentified. We don't know who made it. That could have a, an American flag on the tail, and we wouldn't know because it's moving so fast. You know, it could be stolen tech from Roswell. We don't know. Yeah, that brings us to another conspiracy. You know, we talk about the day after Roswell, that book that Colonel Philip J. Corso wrote. You know, according to him, he was in charge of, of dispatching all this technology to different firms uh, over the country, you know, uh, to give them a technological advance. So, I mean, that's, that's something else that probably happened. I'm, I, I believe that probably happened. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's honestly, it's completely believable. And then, well, let me ask you this, and, and I'll back step to something I said earlier about the movies. When did UFO and, and alien movies start coming out? The 50s. And when was Roswell? 1947. We're coming up on the anniversary. It's in July. So we're coming up on the anniversary of Roswell. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, here's another interesting fact, and then we're going to have to tie this all up, Tiny. But, you know, we went from a propeller-driven airplane, and I think the highest speed it was doing was 435 knots. It was like, I think it was a Navy Hellcat. I could be wrong on that, so just keep, you know. But uh, after Roswell, like two years after that, Chuck Yeager was breaking, you know, Mach 1 in a completely different looking vessel. Right. So something had to have happened. Now, if that was all, you know, tech from Operation Paperclip and, you know, Warner Von Braun and all his buddies, possible, don't know. Uh, it would not be out of the realm of possibility. However, I think we can all agree that all of this that we've discussed today still stems from the fact that. The Watchers, bred with the Daughters of Cain, and that's how we got the Giants, and that's how all this folklore and mythos came about. That's that's where the whole thing started, and I think Gary Wayne kind of hits a home run when he states that. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. Mm. It's a tough one to choke down because there's, there's a lot of stuff you have to accept with that, but to me it makes the most sense. Well, my it friends, really, I'm sorry, what time? It, it really does. It, it makes sense if you think about it. But in the same respect, it, it kind of makes your mind hurt. It does because there's just so many things that could be another possibility. It's just, it, there's just so many different, different answers, you know. And right. somehow, somehow, Tiny, it's all connected. There again, like I said in the, the previous podcast, we could just be, you know, some parasite on a, a wart on a giant somewhere. You never know. Well, Tiny, that's all the time we have. Uh, we want to thank everyone to listen, for listening to Beyond Fringe. If you have a story or you want to be a guest on the show, please contact us at beyondfringe001 at gmail.com or... You can call us at 828-407-0046. Tiny, you have anything to add? Everybody, be good. Be good to each other. Let's have some good times and enjoy the summer. Uh, truer words could not have been said, my brother. Truer words could not have been said. I am the cryptic guy. Tiny and I would like to thank you for listening. And remember, my friends, knowledge is power. And the only way to defeat the intentional veil of darkness that surrounds us all, battle the ignorance that shackles us to hatred and despair, and restore the balance, is to let in the light. So remember, always let there be light in your life, and keep believing. Thank you for listening.